Greeting to you, New Life Fellowship, and welcome to the English service. Thank you for tuning in to the English service at New Life Fellowship Facebook. My brothers and sisters, I miss you again. I hope that every one of you are doing well. My prayer to see that the Lord God is active in every one of you. I believe that God is on our side, is on your side. You can overcome this. This week, I am going to continue to talk from the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the book that talks about the work of the apostles. A new believers and this week, we continue to talk from that and the topics of my lesson this week, talking about the birth of the church, the birth of the church, the early church, the first church, you would say. After Jesus had wait in Jerusalem for the gift from the Father, there were Christ followers, 120 of them, including disciples, gathered together in Jerusalem, waiting and praying to receive the gifts from the Father. As you know, they pray and they received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and then there comes the birth of the church. There, an out, there is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. I read about that last week. I want to read again this week. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 3. So when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, all together in one place. Suddenly, suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seems to be tongues of fire that spread, that separated and came to rest on each one of them. The day, like 40 days, you know, after Jesus rose again from the death and then 10 days, after Jesus go to heaven, all total 50 days. On the 50th days, that when the promise of the Lord came and pouring down on the disciple, on the people that will wait on the promises from the Father. So when there is a pouring of the Holy Spirit of God, we call it, there is a revival. Revival. And we, then when there is a revival, there is a repentance. When there is repentance, there is a restoration between the sinner that accept the gospel believe in God, starting to have relationship with the one true God. So after the revival came a pouring of the Holy Spirit, then Peter, the apostle Peter, got courage to preach the gospel. After he preached the gospel, there were 3,000 people gave their life to Jesus, repented and gave their life to Jesus. And they start to have 
relationship with the God of heaven before. They never ever have a relationship with God at all. And it's time to live a community of Christ-like. They form a community of Christ-like. And they start, started a community that love one another, love each other, care for each other. God has given His Holy Spirit to His church already. We don't have to wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit anymore. But we need to believe in God's promises for the Holy Spirit. Believe in the promises for the Holy Spirit. After you believe, then you receive the promise, promises of the Holy Spirit by faith. Believe and receive by faith. And you use the gifts of the Holy Spirit that was given to you. Use it. If you don't use it, you will lose it. So, when we talk about the revival, I have researched there were 222 millions were recorded you know, in the history. I believe there are a lot more of the Holy Spirit are pouring on His sons and daughters because we are living on the last day. God said, on the last day, I will pour my spirit on your sons and your daughter. My brothers and sisters, this is the last day. Be privileged to live in the last day. God has been given His Holy Spirit to every one of us. We need to believe in the promises. We need to receive the promises through faith. And we receive it, we use the promises. Make it active. You know, I want to continue to read from the book of Acts. Chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. So after these people had believed in the Lord God, these people devoted themselves. These are a brand new believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at many wonders, many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give anyone who had need. Every day, every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere heart, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You know what? After the pouring of the Holy Spirit, the Lord didn't stop His Holy Spirit right then. No, the Spirit of the Lord continued to pouring on sons and daughters, the whose hunger, whose hungry is for the Spirit, who's hungry for the Spirit of the Lord God. This is the time that you and I 
have the benefit, a blessing to receive this gift from the Father, the gift of the Holy Spirit. God has opened his spiritual eyes of the people start to see the greatness of God. They start to see. They start to come. They start to receive. Receive it. See, point number one, they devoted themselves. These brand new believers devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles. Devoted. They they starting to have relate. They starting to value God. Starting to have relationship with God. They value the leader. They value God. They value the leadership. And they hungry for the word of God. It's important my brothers and sisters, for us to grow in loving the Word of God. It's good for you. It's good for me. Growing in loving the Word of God. Learn from the Word of God because the Word of God is the power. It's the power of God. When you receive the Word of God in you, you will receive the power of God as well and use the power of God to benefit the kingdom of God. Point number one, these brand new believers, they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostle. Right now, you are devoting yourself to learning the word of God. Even though we don't get to see each other face to face, you watch Facebook, and you learn the Word of God through this Facebook from New Life Fellowship. This is important for us. We can learn from the first Christian. They devoted themselves to the teaching from the Word of God, teaching from the apostles. Number two, they meet and fellowship. They meet in fellowship. They meet in a court. The scripture said they meet in the temple courts and they meet in a home. They meet in homes. They value the people. They meet with each other. They value each other. And they study the Bible. And they study the Word of God together. They pray together daily. Can you imagine? That is really important. It's so, so powerful. They pray daily. Show their need. They show their need for God. They're just hungry for God. You know, it's important. The church that pray, that church, we have a lot of signs and wonders. Church that pray. Your family as well. You yourself as well. If you pray for your, your family, if you pray for yourself, it's important. But I mean, these people, they meet together and they break bread together break bread they reminded themselves that Christ had died for them Christ have forgiven their sin their sin have been forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ and they grow spiritually and many wonders signs and wonders follow follow and all of them fall with the fire of God. It's important, my brothers and sisters. We cannot afford it to lose the fire of God in our lives. 
We need to have the fire of God in our life. We need that badly. If you grow cold, if you have no fire of God in our lives, this life is going to be compromised. And one day, you will find yourself committing sin and honor. We can't afford that. Continually meet with other people. Pray together. Study the word together. Number three, they sacrifice. They sacrifice. These people, their ingenuity, they know that all wealth belong to God, not belong to them. They are just the stewards. So they know that this wealth, this stuff that they own belong to God. They're not the owner. They start to sell property, sell their possession, and bring the money to help meet the need of the people because they love God and they love others around them. They care for one another. They serve one another and they grow in generous with each other. They give, they sold their stuff, then they meet the need of the people. They help people with their basic needs. Point number four, these early Christian, early church, they set a good example in the community. This is a role model for a good community meant to be like. See, they have, these people have a good reputation People in the community start to see that, wow, these people are really nice. These people love other people. These people care for other people. They want to be part. They want, the, the, they want to be a part of that community. They want to be a part of that group, of that community. Again, community that loving, caring, and serving one another. And they treat one another like family, like family members. My brothers and sisters, now it's a time for us. We need a community like this in the world that we are living in right now. It doesn't matter which country that you are living in. You need a good community. We need a community that's safe. It's a safe community. It's a community that, that love one another. A community that care for one another. A community that encourage one another. It's a community that build one another up. With this COVID-19 thing, my brothers and sisters, we need one another. With now, maybe it's difficult for us to meet face to face in a community like this. But you know what? We can make a community through online for now. Online for now. Don't wait, oh, wait, wait, wait until COVID die down and then we get to meet. Yes, we will do that. But we continue to meet through online. Meet in cell groups. Meet in church services, even though through online. We need one another. Pray for one another. Study the word of God with one another. Grow with one another. I believe that God's power is there. We need to have the power of God. We need to have the fire of God 
we cannot afford to lose this fire during this pandemic. My brothers and sisters, I know this pandemic is difficult. I know it's hard for every one of us, but I believe we come to an end. We're getting closer and closer to the end because I believe that God is on your side. God is with you. God with our city. God with our countries as well. We want to have a wonderful community in our country. We don't want to see this anymore. Join with me, my brothers and sisters, and pray for one another. Pray for our city. Pray for our nation. That this community will be, be safe. That no one will die of COVID-19 anymore. Pray with me. My Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much for your presence. Your presence is here in the midst of us, Father. Father, I invite you, Lord God, to stir up every one of us. Lord God, stir up your spirit up. You have given your spirit to every one of us already. Lord God, stir it up so that we can see the fire of God coming up. So that we can use this fire of God, Lord God, to calm the situation that the world pandemic causes us, Lord God. Lord God, protects every one of them that don't uh, have COVID yet. Lord God, but heal those, Lord God, who are contagious with COVID-19, Lord God. Heal them and heal this city, heal this nation in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. See you next week. Amen.